<laughs> OK, I've got a question for you. Do you have a favourite historical figure? Well, a man from Sutton Coalfield definitely does. Daniel Williams is so fascinated by the history of King Charles that, ah, the first, he's decided to travel around the country dressed up as him. Well, well, why not? And Daniel joins us this morning in full costume. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Now, um, I've got to ask you, why? Why? That's yeah. the question I got asked earlier. Um, yes, well, basically it all started with a visit to Carisbrook Castle four years ago and started to learn about the history of Charles, which totally blew me away because we don't know much about King Charles I other than his end, which yeah. is unfortunate. Um, they had a quarrel with Parliament. But there's so much more to his story than that. As big as it is, there's so much more um, in terms of where he's visited around the UK, um, his travels, his adventures, and um, and so I just took one look at it all and thought, what can I do to like get all this message to other people about his history more? And so this happened. You are now dressed as, <laughs> as King. That's this is authentic King, King Charles the First attire, is it? That's right. This is based on one of his pictures. Uh, if you just like to describe what you're wearing, you have a magnificent beard and 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 very luxuriant hair and a moustache. I must admit. That's right. Yes, uh, very luxurious and. Uh, it's a um, particular haircut called the Love Lock, which is very traditional at the time. Uh, the gentleman at the time actually had one side of their hair longer than the other. And oh, apparently, wow. yeah, apparently um, abroad, the French thought it was a sign of the devil's, devil's work. They thought uh, it made the, the English devils, basically. <laughs> and it's very bizarre because at that time there was, there was so much madness uh, going on with witchcraft, people's fear of that. Um, so to put your head in that time, it's quite a revelation, really. What about the rest of your... You have... You look like you're, you've got a medals and things. Well, that, that's right, yeah. This okay. is the Order of the Garter, uh, which was something that Charles wore a lot of, um, St George the Dragon. And um, he believed in the chivalry of it all, um, something that still continues to this day, I, I think, as yeah. well, with, with our present queen. A nice silk blouse, a bit of a ruff there, and... Yeah? That's right, yeah. And, uh, and a ring as well, a ruby ring, just oh. to complete the look, but... A lot of uh, thoughts gone into it, to be honest, and uh, even the hat as well. We've You've exceedingly the large feather. With a large feather. <laughs> so, what was so great about King Charles the First then? What was so great? Um, he was a great personality behind it all. Um, I've basically amassed a huge collection of books and really got my head into his character, and it's just been one huge surprise, really. And um, to pull off bringing a character to life, you really have to get into into their mind, into their motivation. And um, he was a very theatrical kind of king, loved the theatre, um, used to hold regular masks, as they were called, in Hampton Court and places like that, and Banqueting House in London. And um, also, he was a big art collector, and so his whole life was very, very colourful. And thank God, a lot of his work is now on display at the Royal Academy at the moment. Now, the journey you're going on, is it a special sort of... King Charles the first tour of places he visited or, or what or just you're just traveling the country spreading the word yes I'm going to certain places basically as this progresses um, I learn more and more about places that I didn't even know he went to and um, and so the plan is on the 28th of this month I'm going to Dunfermline where he's born in Scotland and also going to Stirling Castle and it's getting to the stage now where people are inviting me which is great and so that's educating me along the way as well. And so it's having an all-round positive effect, really. Now, with your researches, do you think the the history, because really, history, they always say history is written by the victors. Do you think Prince, oh, King Charles, should I say, uh, King Charles I was, uh, well, has been well-treated? Not really, no. Um, like I say, uh, it's one king that hasn't had enough exposure, really. And hopefully through me doing this, it's going to give him a better platform and people will start asking more. I mean, I've had messages uh, through things like Facebook, a lady... Um, probably at first wondered what the hell was going on. You know, suddenly one minute I'm DJing, the next minute um, I'm dressed as a 17th century person. This is a worry because, of course, this is my <laughs> occupation and I'm a DJ as well, so I might suddenly become King Charles II. Yes, that would be good, actually. We could do a, a double, uh, double a act. Double, uh, we, could, we could tour the halls. It's sun, isn't it? Yeah, but she, she actually messaged me and said, uh, thank you so much for what you're doing. She said, um, I never knew much about King Charles I, but now I'm actually learning and um, I really thank you for it. And things like that really, really motivate you and give you a boost and say... So, and it's all this was a chance visit to Carisbrook Castle. That's correct, yeah. Mad. Uh, and then Hampton Court, I went to Hampton Court, uh, and obviously it's just manifested from there. And even a friend of mine um, from Stonely Abbey, uh, Dave, we actually filmed uh, with Ben the Midlands Today there, which is going to be featured in the programme tonight, which is really, really good. So that will give 
Stonely Abbey some much needed uh, exposure and hopefully people will go and visit these places. I was just thinking, you know, if a chance moment you turn left instead of right, you could now be sitting here dressed as Mary Queen of Scotland or something like that. <laughs> That's a thought. Right, now, what we thought, we'd give you a little quiz. Wow. Because you are King Charles I. You are the reincarnation of King Charles I. OK, so we thought we'd give you a little a King Charles I <laughs> quiz. You ready for this? OK, go for it. Question one. Where in Paris did Charles and Henrietta Maria get married by proxy? Ooh, my gosh. Now, that is a really, really difficult one. Um, Where in Paris? Well, he never actually went to Paris, but obviously, by proxy. obviously it was, yeah. Um, it wasn't La Rochelle, was it? No. OK. Damn. OK, next. Notre Dame. OK. <laughs> Can you name Charles's older brother whose death left him as sole heir to the throne? Yes, it was Henry. Henry? Henry Tudor. Henry I mean, Frederick Prince. Henry Tudor. He Wrong. Did this stay there? Sorry. The, the tour could be off at this rate. <laughs> How many times did Charles dissolve Parliament before 1629? How many times did he dissolve Parliament before 1629? Round three. Three. Ding. Well done, you. Thank God. Your Honour, uh, Your Highness. What kind of book did Charles attempt to force on Scotland which caused much unrest in the country? It was Bible-related. Yes, it was Bible-related. It wasn't a Bible, then. Ooh. Uh... You need to go back to Carisbrook Castle, <laughs> A new prayer book. Ah, now, you... You've still got a head on your shoulders, I'm glad to say, but, you know, you know you're coming to a sticky end fairly shortly. <laughs> Where in London was Charles executed? It was Banqueting House. Oh, so Banqueting House. That put people off their lunch, wouldn't it, really? Turn out the window and see yes. the head locked off. <laughs> Daniel Williams, who should I say, King Charles I. Thanks for being a sport, good sport, and coming to see us this morning. When do you start on your trek? So, um, next uh, tour part will be Scotland on the 28th of May. 28th of May. Excellent. Well, thanks very much indeed. When do you think you'll finish? Uh, probably not, actually, because um, it's it's going so well. Uh, Pace is like inviting me, as I say, and um, and say so anything I can do to help the heritage out there in the country, I'll continue. This is going to be marvellous. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the programme this morning. Right, then, our five to nine song. Right, OK. On this day in 1976...